Here is NBA Hall of Famer James Worthy telling us. I'd much rather guard Michael Jordan than Larry Bird because you have to play the game as a thinker when you're playing him. A huge statement to make, but there is a reason why Michael Jordan himself feels like this about Larry Bird. Enjoy yourself, dog. You, you. Y'all gave the room five money. Curse words said out of love and respect if you can believe it. As Mike also had a rule for his Bulls teammates. Never, ever trash talk Larry Bird. From Mike himself, quote, Not a single person, not one word, no one talked to Larry Bird. But why was this the rule? Why did the greatest player of all time avoid poking the bear that was Larry? And why did Magic Johnson say this about Bird? You only told me one line in your career. Larry Bird said that there would be another Larry Bird one day. And Larry, there will never, ever be another Larry Bird. Maybe because NBA history has forgotten how absurdly overpowering and unforgivingly brutal Larry Bird was. What's up guys, Mike here, and in his first season in the NBA, Larry Bird won Rookie of the Year over Magic Johnson and finished fourth in the MVP voting as the Celtics went from 29 wins in 1979 without Larry to 61 the very next season. At the time, the largest win increase in league history and a mark that still stands at number five. Keep in mind, Bird's famous Hall of Fame wingmen in Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish would not join the team until 1981. It is a certainty. Without Larry Bird, there was no Celtics dynasty. To put his league dominance into perspective, after his rookie season in seasons two through nine, Larry was at the very least in the top three of the MVP voting every single year. He also had three straight MVPs from 1984 to 1986, a level of play so large that I had to check if anyone had matched it and three straight MVPs has only been matched twice. The other two players to do so were Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. All the respect in the world to the guys who got us here, but since the post-merger era, no one has matched Larry Bird's three MVPs in three seasons during a time in which Magic Johnson was also in his prime. He was playing chess and everybody else was playing checkers. Larry's third MVP in 1986 would also be followed up with the Celtics' third title. In comparison, Michael Jordan had three MVPs and three titles in nine seasons. And after Larry would win his third MVP, Magic Johnson would look down and realize that he had zero of his own. Yes, Magic would end up winning three MVPs between the years 1987 to 1990, and he would also win an additional two titles during that time period, leaving him in the Bird vs. Magic argument as overall the winner. As to be fair, overall, he did have a resume that would surpass Larry Bird's. However, we need to remember that Larry Bird's career and Prime was cut short due to a back injury that was so severe that doctors had to unlock his spine as it had fused into the wrong place. How did he get that injury? Building and paving his mother's driveway in the summer of 1985 when he was an NBA superstar. Why would he do this during his Apex Prime? We're going to get into that, but guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank Ada for sponsoring today's video. As did you know, there are treatments available now for COVID-19. Yup, that means Means there's something you can do if you do catch it to avoid getting really sick. The colder months are coming up, we all know that, and COVID-19 cases are on the rise. So it is important if you or your loved ones are at high risk of developing severe COVID-19 to know about the treatment options that are available to you if you're eligible. That way we can get that treatment and spend time together. And taking charge of your health is always a smart move. So check out Ada's free questionnaire. It's quick, easy, and helps you get the info you need on COVID-19 to stay healthy this season. Make sure to go click the link down below to see if you're eligible and to learn more about treatment options. Again, the questionnaire is very easy. Just click the link in the description down low. Thank you to Ada for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into that video. Here's where Larry was headed before his injuries did destroy him. From the ages of 27 to 31, Larry Bird averaged 27.3 points, 9.8 rebounds, and 6.8 assists per game on 51% shooting, while leading the Celtics to two championships, giving him his third overall. This level of productivity was and is is unprecedented. Remember, this was a slower era and compared to even LeBron James at these ages. Bird's stats still remain supreme as Bron put up 26.3 points, 7.3 rebounds, and 6.8 assists on 53.5% shooting. I'm not trying to knock LeBron's greatness 
at all, I'm showcasing Larry's. Only Wilt Chamberlain, LeBron, and Russell Westbrook have averaged at least 25 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists per game during those ages of their career. Unfortunately, unlike the other players on this list, Larry's career was not in his hands after the 1988 season. As the year after finishing second in the MVP voting at the age of 31, at the age of 32, Bird would only play in 6 games and would never be the same. Why? Again, he infamously, instead of hiring workers, built his own grandmother's driveway in the summer of 1985, and during this process, his back slipped out of alignment and locked into unnatural positions, which in the 1980s was a career death sentence. It might be a career death sentence now. In the 1988 playoffs against the Pistons, Bird was hampered by foot injuries and would get surgery on his foot in 1989 after playing six games in excruciating pain. It was there that his productivity fell off of a cliff in the saddest way possible. Watching Larry hobble around with a back brace as he still fought to do everything he could to help the Celtics win was a testament to the work ethic and unrelenting drive he had fostered. But where did this drive come from? And why did he trash talk so much? Michael Jordan would say Larry Bird is the greatest trash talker and mind game player of all time. He taught me everything I know about getting in folks' heads. That is a direct quote from Mike. And as we know, the rule during Michael Jordan's time was never talk to Mike. During Michael Jordan's career, he knew Larry Bird both talk the talk and walk the line of friendly banter or trash talk that keeps you up at night. Larry did not want to just beat you on the court. He wanted to embarrass you. Embarrassment is something all of us avoid. It is something that during Larry Bird's career, NBA stars feared. Six-time All-Star Sean Kemp's first meeting with Bird went like this. Well, first of all, he asked me to jump ball. He said, you the cat broke all my records in high school, right? And I was like, yeah, that's me. He said, I got you. Bird would finish with a 40-point triple-double, backing up his talk as was usual for him. In the 1987 season, Bird would tell All-Star Xavier McDaniel after a timeout was called with the game on the line. Larry steps in and says, uh, Coach, uh, why don't you just give me the ball and tell everybody to get out of the way? So he tells Xavier, he says, I'm getting the ball. I said, I know I'm going to be waiting. And he said, I'm going to get it right here. I'm going to shoot it right in your face. Five, and Bird has the basketball. Look out. He shot a shot right in my face. He was like, I didn't need to leave two seconds on the clock. That's what it's all about. Larry proceeded to drain a game-winning jumper right in Xavier McDaniel's face, right from the spot he said he would. Before a game around Christmas, Bird once told Pacers Chuck Person he had a Christmas present for him, then proceeded to drain a three in his face during the game and tell him, Merry Christmas, mother He'd also tell Person if the Celtics beat the Pacers in the deciding game five of their playoff matchup in 1991, that if Bird won, Persons would have to mow his grass. To which Persons apparently replied, okay, same bet on my end, only of course, Horse, it was Larry Bird who came out on top. There is no report if Persons actually mowed the grass. There were reports that Bird openly said he found it to be an insult if a white player was guarding him. I always tell this, people, this story about Larry Bird. He was cursing under his breath. And I asked him, I said, Larry, what's going on with you? He says, you guys are being disrespectful to me. He says, it's disrespectful when y'all put a white guy on me. Bird walked into the first ever three-point contest and told everyone in the locker room, who is playing for second? Then he did not take his warm-up jacket off as he flew through the field and earned the trophy. That chick's had my name on it for a week now, and I knew I was going to win this thing. I've been practicing. Larry refused to shake hands with a rookie, Dominique Wilkins. And Larry put both hands behind his back. He wouldn't shake my hand. In the first play of the game, he said, you don't even belong in this league, Holmes. He said, but I'm still getting 30 on your ass. <laughs> and later, against that same Atlanta Hawks team in 1985, Bird would score 60 points as the Hawks bench would get fined by their coach for cheering him on. Bird has 60 points. Larry Bird scored 60. And then finally, at the end of this game, he literally said, oh, no. uh, off the glass into the trainer. And, uh, no way. Yeah, and so um, it was a bad night. And of course, the shot went right in. It always seems like I, I get the last word. <laughs> and speaking of three-pointers, we haven't even mentioned that Larry is considered one of the greatest shooters ever for good reason. From 1985 to 1988, Larry Bird averaged two and a half three-point attempts per game and made 41.4% of those shots, which might seem underwhelming. However, in the final season of his prime, 1988, Bird would attempt over three threes a game 
came at a time where NBA teams as a whole averaged, wait for it, just five three-point attempts a game. Larry paved the way for the three-point shooting explosion that would come. He was a transcendent player for his time. In the 2024 season currently, Luka Doncic is averaging over 10 three-pointers a game. Playing in a three-point era would have opened Larry's game in ways we can't quantify, so we won't play what if here. Instead, let's ask, where did this all come from? Three straight MVPs, three championships with the Celtics, and the ultimate trash-talking legend who you could never shake yourself. What made Larry Bird develop this persona? The answer is a lot of pain and a lot of hardship. Because why would an NBA superstar build a driveway himself during his prime and not just hire someone? It might seem absurd to us now, only that type of put-in-the-work-yourself mindset was instilled in Larry at a young age out of necessity. Born to a poor family in French Lake, Indiana, population under 2,000. By the seventh grade, Larry Bird was clocking in 40 hours a week at the local market, where he was paid a few dollars and whatever food he could fit into a brown bag to take home. Larry Bird knew hardship, but he never complained. He instead put his head down and worked. His loyalty to his family was so great that his dad had to offer him $20, a huge sum of money for his family, of course, at that time, to get Larry to even try out for the high school basketball team despite Larry's, of course, greatness. It was during high school that Larry's talent shone through as he averaged over 30 points per game and 20 rebounds per game as a high school senior, where he also had the classic growth spurt story. Going from six foot one as a sophomore to over six foot seven by the time he accepted a scholarship to Indiana University to play for the legendary Hall of Fame coach Bob Knight, RIP Bob Knight. This pair seemed destined for greatness, as both Knight and Bird are known for their tremendous basketball IQs only. The harshness of Indiana's system combined with his family obligations had Bird knowing this was not the place for him. In a shocking move to everyone, Larry would never play a single game in Indiana, and the Hoosiers without Bird would go on to win the 1976 NCAA championship. Bird could have been a part of that famous team, but he instead decided to hitchhike back home to French Lick as he had a newly born daughter to take care of and a dad who would tragically end his life shortly after Larry came back to help the family. Larry would say at this time basketball was his outlet, saying it was his way out and when Indiana State coach Bill Fitch came back to recruit Larry, he was now ready to rejoin the basketball world and realize his destiny. After years of hardship and struggle. Larry took this pain out on unsuspecting opponents, and at Indiana State, he immediately became a superstar, averaging 32.8 points, 13.3 rebounds, 4.4 assists on over 54% shooting in his first college season. In his third and final college season, yes, Larry would famously lose to Magic Johnson and the Michigan State Spartans in the most televised college basketball game of all time, a record that still stands. This game would launch the Bird vs. Magic rivalry, and overall that season, despite the loss, Larry had led Indiana State to a 33-1 record as he put up 28.6 points, 14.9 rebounds, 5.5 assists, and 2.5 steals per game. Larry would later say this loss was the hardest of his career and he still finds it hard, as when the team returned after losing the title, thousands of Indiana State fans greeted them despite the outcome, a move that touched Larry to his core and caused him to dedicate the Celtics 1984 championship to the people of Terre Haute, Indiana. Larry never, ever forgot where he came from. Austin believed in Bird so much that they actually got the NBA to change the draft rules in 1979, as Red Arback, one of the most important men in basketball history, convinced everyone to allow teams to draft a player who was still playing in college, as long as that NBA team signed the player before the next draft. This seemed like an innocent rule change, and one that would benefit the players, only everyone would watch in horror in 1979 as Red used this rule to draft Larry Bird with the sixth pick, as the rule was immediately removed, but the damage was done. Boston had stolen Larry and they would pay him the largest rookie contract in league history, of course, at the time. And we know how the rest of the story goes, the back injury that derailed him. The real question is, what if Larry Bird was never injured? With Bird's injuries, the Detroit Pistons took over the East and Magic Johnson cemented himself as the greatest point guard to ever live. If this injury had never happened, Bird would have been Michael Jordan's roadblock, as in his last healthy season, Larry was second in MVP voting to Michael Jordan as Bird averaged 29.9 points, 9.3 rebounds, and 6.1 assists per game on almost 53% shooting. It is of course possible the bad boy Pistons still would have taken down the Celtics. All I know is that they never were able to do it while Larry was healthy. To me, this is similar to when Michael Jordan went and took a break playing baseball. The Houston Rockets stepped in and won 
won two championships only, Larry Bird was never able to return to the player he once was. Except it's here that we again continue to see Larry Bird's true character and his true mindset. Many would have given up basketball immediately as it was feared that playing basketball would cause Larry to not be able to walk. That is how much pain he was in. Despite the injuries, Larry played through this pain. Larry fought and fought and even chose to represent the United States and play on the dream team, dedicating himself to an entire summer of practices and Olympic play. Even though his NBA career was over, he did not play in the 1993 season. That is who Larry Bird is. A workhorse, a man whose spirit cannot be broken, and one of the greatest players we have ever seen touch a basketball. His trash talk was famous, his play was unforgettable, and the way he got there is a true inspiration to anyone looking to make it out of a tough situation. He didn't complain, he worked as hard as he could, and he never looked back on his way to greatness. So there we have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. And also, I'll be honest, it would be really cool to go and hit 2 million subscribers. And I would love for you to be a part of that. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You are awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think, and again, have an awesome day.